Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, live stream my lecture that I would be doing around this time, Monday to Friday, uh, on Discord. So the link, I imagine, will be uh, in the description box when I get organised. And um, with that, I usually say a prayer. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do that, but I'm going to just uh, give a moment for anybody who wants to. Do a very short one. And what I'm going to do is speak about... Um, speak about two women in church history uh, called Perpetua and Blandina. So, and I've made some notes from various sources and I will include those in the link, but for the moment, I'm just gonna kind of cobble it together. So, hello, man like H. I'm gonna try not to get involved with the live chat. It never comes onto the videos when they're published properly, but anyway. So the early church, as you may or may not know, was uh, heavily dominated by men. Um, the 12 named apostles were obviously men, um, but there were many disciples and not all of those were men. And there's like specifics of Jesus and certain women. There are other uh, leaders of churches and pres presbyteresses in the early, uh, in you know, within the Bible. There are leaders of churches, there are teachers, there are prophetesses. So, um, right, so we have that. The early church is very male-centric and that reflected the andocentric Greco-Roman culture in which our faith uh, developed. But it's not the case that, that females are absent altogether, as I've just referenced, from the early church history period. And um, although it was minim like minimal involvement, um, we can have a look at that at that that critiques really the idea that it was wholly patriarchal. So in martyrdom literature, particularly um, the female Christian voice and indeed the, the Christian female martyr is, um, is more heavily present. So from 112 uh, CE to 313, as you may or may not know, uh, sorry, fairly commonplace persecution, which is nothing new if you uh, follow what I'm talking about all the time, and also martyrdom of Christians who refuse to either renounce their faith or um, give worship to um, the, the multitude, the, the pantheon of gods that were present within the Roman Empire. And um, other Christians who observed these uh, public spectacles because they weren't privately uh, martyred, they were publicly murdered, um, recorded the event as a way of remembering them and inspiring faith and endurance in other people who would face the same um, ordeal or at least persecution or discrimination of some kind. So these were the most popular early Christian writings and they are, I read, instilled with rich theology on the nature of discipleship and the kingdom of God, which is obviously not gender centric. So women playing um, playing and played a certain role in these stories. So of the numerous examples, um, like I said, we're going to speak about two, which is, which are Perpetua and Blandina. So Blandina was one of the uh, Gallican Christians and she was martyred in 177 CE. Um, and the account of her martyrdom is preserved by church historian Eusebius of Caesarea. And the other lady is Vibia Perpetua, who was martyred along with several others in Carthage, which is northern Africa, at the beginning of the third century. And um, yeah, the bulk of her story comes from her journals, Perpetua's journal, uh, making it the earliest Christian document written by a woman. So in the narratives, both women are leaders among the martyrs, not, not necessarily among their, their churches, but among the martyrs. Blandina um, constantly is looked to as a source of inspiration by Christians undergoing torture at that time. Um, and in one place, her direct encouragement to a young man in his hour of weakness allowed him to remain steadfast until the end. Likewise, uh, in her imprisonment, Perpetua is given um, by the Lord a series of visions uh, and then she then shares them to encourage perseverance among other persecuted Christians. And notably, 
respective groups, um, including among the Gallican Christians, Bishop uh, Pothinus is what I read. So both of their stories also portray the women in ways that were scandalous to the uh, norms of the particular time and the societies within which they were, um, where women were defined by having worth only through their relationship to men, basically, as daughters, wives, mothers, etc. Perpetua uh, is first introduced in her roles as a mother. Uh, she has an infant son and... Um, as a daughter, she is visited by her father whilst in prison. However, she refuses to listen to her father when he begs her to um, like give up this nonsense, basically, um, and to deny Christ in order to save her like physical life and to be able to raise her son. And instead, what she does is she gives her child up to the care of her father rather than denounce or deny Christ. Um, so she she renounces pretty much both of her roles, mother and a daughter at that point which is in keeping with what the bible teaches anyway so but um like her father doesn't condemn her for this decision um that we know of and the narrative certainly doesn't um and praises the action as one of uh i read here paradigmatic discipleship and blandina who has no affiliation to a man is described as a noble mother who had comforted her children and sent them on triumphantly to the king. And that's in Church History 5.1.55. Uh, um, but her children are not biological children, uh, but rather that's referring to her fellow martyrs who looked to her for strength and found it, uh, incidentally. So lastly, both stories, um, in both of their stories, the women are... Uh, featured as the martyrs in whom Christ is most present. So they're extolled as um, like epitomizing um, feminine martyrdom, at least, or Christian martyrdom. Um, like Stephen, who in the New Testament is the first Christian martyr, both women become uh, figures representative of Christ. So in during her torture, Perpetua is um, thinking not of herself, similar to Christ, um, but is encouraging and sustaining and lifting up other Christians before being pierced in the side, which, as anybody who knows anything about the crucifixion lions, I said, <laughs> Blandina uh, was hung on a stake to make her easier for the lions in case they were having a bad day. That's not why. Um, just to be spiteful, really, I guess, and, and cruel. But the image, uh, like the, you know, that's evocative of Christ hanging on the cross and um, it's quoted that she appeared to be hanging in the shape of a cross and her constant prayers greatly inspired her fellow victims who saw the one with a capital O who was crucified in the form of their sister and that's church history 5.1 um, you know a strong female voice I'm not a feminist by the way but a strong feminine voice is heard um, which could easily have been overlooked or, you know, pushed to the back. But like I said earlier, um, female Christian martyrs of this era, at least, were very popular. Um, you know, recountings of their stories were very popular uh, within the Christian community. And Christ proved that what men think lowly God deems worthy of great glory. Not lowly God, that should be a comma there. Christ proved that what men think lowly god deems worthy of great glory and that's church history 5.1.17 so the irony um of these accounts at a time when the church had already identified or at least um it can be interpreted as identifying um, masculinity or maleness actually um as an essential quality for christian leadership i.e first timothy uh, the Romans did not distinguish whatsoever and pretty much similar to today, just saying I am a Christian um, still in some places in the world is illegal or is worthy of a death sentence. And the Romans were forerunners <laughs> in this um, persecution, which is foretold by Christ, to be fair. So they didn't distinguish uh, maleness as anything essential to being a Christian leader. Um, and killed, they tortured and killed Christians regardless. They were pretty equal opportunities murderers uh, in that respect. So all that mattered to them was, you know, a verbal confession, I am a Christian or I do follow Christ. And um, the same can be said for the martyrs who were visited by Christ through women. So 
it says in those moments the gender martyrs were sustained by their ministry uh so the female voice in the patristic age is preserved in the martyrdom literature then like i say very popular um like the implications for this are um it's a unique genre uh it says we do not read treatises regarding the nature of god or humanity or the church from a human perspective Rather, we encounter the lives of true disciples, those who have conformed themselves to Christ, even in death, their own death, rather than the generalized Christian, you know, uh, being in death with Christ, who live in Christ, uh, which ultimately demonstrates the startling nature of the kingdom of God, because, of course, people don't happily go to their deaths for things they believe are nonsense. Um, and in these stories, we see... Um, like basically the mold being broken or at least patriarchal, you know, cultural, uh, normative, I don't know, like gender identities. It all sounds very microaggression to me when I speak like this, but it reveals the liberation that Christ brings, not only from, uh, you know, like neither male or female, Jew or Gentile, but also, you know, the truth will set you free and free indeed. And um, Christian is the penalty of sin and indeed you're given some um some massive help towards avoiding sin in the first place um through the holy spirit and the fruits of the spirit so yep jesus is liberating message with which at least in regard to women was obscured in uh in the early church because i don't know why i mean the story of mary and martha is still included but i don't think that the I think when, um, you know, uh, Jews would read these stories, if they read the New Testament in those times, they would recognize that to sit at the feet of a rabbi for a woman was pretty radical. And yet Jesus is clearly saying, no, leave her where she is, um, you know, like so she can continue to learn. And, and, and of course, Mary was treated um, as a disciple. Yeah, she, she wasn't uh, just out making the sandwiches kind of thing. So where was I? Right. Um, it says the powerful ministry of Blandina and Perpetua and countless other mothers named and unnamed shows us that where the kingdom of God is, there is no longer Jew or Greek. Uh, there is no longer slave. Sorry, that's Galatians 3.28. What I'd like to add is that's not a pro-transgender uh, verse. <laughs> um, and certainly uh, Deuteronomy, I think, 23.1 is uh, like anti. But what's happening is i mean obviously there is no longer male there is no longer slave or free we'll take that as an example i'm going off topic slightly but there certainly still were slaves and free people uh, free men but christians were um, commanded to treat their servants or slaves um differently basically that if they were both christian they were you know the, like treat them as a brother basically not this kind of brother that you pay for all their food and leave them in their room, like work. No, they're still your employee or your servant or your slave. But, you know, there are other parts in the Bible that say treat them uh, accordingly and after a certain amount of years, uh, give them their freedom. So it's not act, it's not like slavery as in you're a chattel and, and therefore that's you finished. So I finished that. So I'm going to look quickly at the um, chat, which probably won't show up. Uh, once this is published there are still men and women too yes <laughs> hallelujah because oh well yeah so yeah villainous sorry i started it and then it was a black screen i had to start it again sorry so right any questions any i say this at the end of every lecture and i'm pretty certain I know the answer but you just have to type now people you don't really have to speak you can't speak it doesn't matter if you shout at your screen so Cherokee I took most of that from a link that you sent me from somebody who's a oh, I think a favorite writer of yours no okay what I'll do is give you the opportunity to bring up a quick topic that I'll just chit chat on for five minutes and then I'll end and I'll come back to Discord. By the way, Discord. So Discord, I do lectures um, Mondays to Fridays. Fridays are women only. Doesn't matter if you put on a squeaky voice. It's women only, born a woman only, women only, people with ovaries, women, you know the ones, uh, not men. Uh, but Monday, 
Wednesday, if I could reconnect to the internet, is polemics, Thursday's church history, i.e. today, slash miscellaneous, but we won't get into that because I have hopes one day that we'll have finished the church history, even though it's a massive, massive area. So, did I discuss the wealthy women supporting Christ's ministry? No, villainous. What I mentioned is Perpetua and Blandina. So only two women, uh, neither of them uh, mentioned in the Bible. So it's early church history and uh, women's studies, I guess, or anyone could be interested in them. So just two of these ladies, they were both martyrs and it wasn't even their stories, to be fair. It was like a, a commentary or like just a, a cobbling together of stuff about both of them. But what I will attempt to do, because Perpetua wrote uh, a journal while she was imprisoned and Blandina, I think uh, somebody else obviously um, like noted it all down. What I'll try to do is get the links and shove them in the description box um, afterwards. So let me press the button again because it always disappears. And Cherokee, I'm going to have to repeat it now. She says that. All are equal at the foot of the cross. And then it's a massive hallelujah from Cherokee. Three whole exclamation points. I want to hammer that home because, as we know, Terry Pratchett says that multiple uh, punctuation is the sure sign of an insane mind. <laughs> but, I mean, that's just his opinion and he has passed away, so he can't take it back. But he was very humorous. Right, so on that bombshell, Discord link will be in the live chat if... Um, anyone feels um, capable or, or willing to do that for me. It will also should be in the link of this um, because the live chat doesn't come up. I read that Christ gave the example at the woman at the well. Of the woman at the well? Of the... Mm, I don't, villainous. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, at the, at the well, that woman was um, a Sumerian, I believe. And uh, she, so she was even more... Um, not part of the fold. I don't mean Jesus's fold, by the way. I mean, like, as a colloquialism. She, you know, she was outside of Israel, as it were, not the place, the bloodline, and therefore, you know, uh, was shunned. Uh, and he gave her news that nobody else really had publicly. He'd done a miracle by then, uh, the water into the wine. So he was becoming known. He'd been accused of a couple of things, but he, he told her who he was quite clear, well, clearly for him. Like plainly as in, you know, he's the living water and anyone who drinks of that water will not thirst. So that's good. Yeah, he had nothing against women um, at all, actually. So, and, um, oh, just love him. Right, any final comments before I just come back to Discord? No. So anyone who doesn't know, round about this time every evening, you will hear me twittering on, on Discord. And eventually people join in and uh, and we have a little chat. Sometimes we even have a laugh. But Cherokee says, hold up. The first female ev woman, sorry, evangelist who ran to her village and took the good news to the Messiah. Yes, to that the Messiah had come. Yes, that's her. C couldn't miss her screeching, <laughs> running around for villainous this morning. You've always got a pedant. There's always a pedant somewhere in Australia, it seems. Right, so, save me someone, either, uh, oh, while I'm at it, while I'm at it, so Discord link, I've got nothing, oh my gosh, right, so what's the, parlour's gone, so don't worry about that, Patreon's still there, what else, there's something or other I can't remember, eh, it will be in the description box if I remember it, please do come to Discord, um, and yeah, oh, and go and subscribe, oh, subscribe, like, comment, pray, repent, um, get on your knees, you know, the, you know, ask Jesus into your life, what's the worst that can happen, rumble, thank you, Cherokee, oh, she's such a good girl, okay, bombshell's over, I'm going to stop this stream, because I, I can't end phone calls either, it's just one of those things, I say bye-bye about 18 times, but I'm being stern, and I'm going to do it, and subscribe to Soko Studio as well and Soko Films. Big up JC because I love that dude. The uh, the South American one. I also love the big JC, that dude. Oh, he, he should be bigged up. All right, God bless you and uh, bye.